All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College Application and Website Development, or AWD program, and in particular, the AWD 1111 .NET Framework with Web Databases class, I have been preparing a series of video lectures based on the book that will be used for the AWD 1111 class for the fall 2019 semester. The book, as you can see on your screen, is ProASP.net MVC5, an A-Press text by Adam Freeman. I am well into Chapter 10 of 27 in the book. Now, I do want to mention something. Yeah, there's an error in here now. Notice I can go to water sports, not a problem. I can go to soccer, not a problem. I can go to chess, not a problem. But when I go back to home, problem. Right now, this requested URL does not work, so that's something that's definitely going to have to be looked at and addressed, if not by the authors, then I believe by me. All right. The author says he's focused on the iPhone, but <clears throat> don't forget to test over multiple applications. So we've talked about this kind of thing before in other classes. All right, middle of page 266. Removing view duplication. In the previous example, the author wanted to show <clears throat> how you can have a controller select the view based on routing information. It is an important and useful feature, but I would not have used it in a real project because it leaves me with two views, menu.cshtml and menuhorizontal.cshtml, which contain largely similar markup and razor expressions. This is a maintenance issue when you have to go and make changes. To resolve this, we're going to consolidate the views. I have created a new file called Flex Menu in the Navs folder with the content that is shown in Figure 10.7. Okay, so let's copy that. So we're going to add another view. Flex menu, let's add that. There it is. And the code is on pages 266 and 267, at least that's what it appears to be. All right, so I'm right underneath that on page 267, and as the author says right here, the cost of removing duplication is a more complex view that can generate, although it can generate both portrait and landscape orientations of the buttons. So it's a matter of personal preference as to which you take. If you're like me and you want to avoid duplications, the author said, this one is better. It has, you know, some useful features. The first of which, as mentioned right here, is the ability to access routing information. The view context property provides information about the state of which, you know, which to take. All right. The second feature is the ability to create local variables within a view. This is possible because of the way Razor views are compiled into classes. The author gives you a cautionary note here. Local variables should be used sparingly. It is a slippery slope into creating views that are hard to maintain and hard to test. A related feature is the way Razor will conditionally set attributes based on values. We defined a string of class names as a local variable like this. And lack of better words, let's just put it this way. Things may not always work out exactly the way you think they're going to work out if you do this. All right, and that's what the author is getting to. 
to actually consolidate the view here halfway down on page 268, we need to revise the menu action of the nav controller. So we're going to need to put in this. And although I sometimes have done this and sometimes have not done this, I'm going to go back to my nav controller. And I'm going to grab what's in there in that partial view right now, and I'm going to comment all of it out. Because remember, there's two ways of getting it to work. And one way is to use the way we had previously. All right, move these over again. Why I keep doing that, I don't know. All right. We remove the parameter that receives the orientation and change the call to the partial view method so that the flex view is now always selected. The result of these changes doesn't alter the layout of the content or the effect of the responsive design, but it does remove the duplication that we talked about earlier. Now, always a good time to come in and do a file, save all, run this, test it, and make sure that indeed it's looking the way we want it to look. All right, while this is coming up, and I know it's, it'll be up right away, but on the next page here, the limitations of responsive design. The author mentions here, there are some problems with responsive design as a way to support mobile clients. The first is that you end up duplicating a lot of code. We've already seen this. The second problem is that responsive design can be, as the author put it, fiddly. In other words, you're constantly testing it to get it right. And it may look different on different phones, for example. All right. Not all devices handle the underlying CSS features that enable responsive design, media queries, properly. Responsive design can be useful when applied thoughtfully, but it can easily result in an app that's riddled with compromises. So it's like anything else, for lack of better words. It, it's a big, um, what would you want to call it, trade-off now and then, all right, to get exactly what you want. In fact, even more than that, it may not be possible to get exactly what you want. So let's go back here and shorten that up again and see if it looks the same way it did before. Yep, it does. But we're still going to have this problem. All right. And I may have missed something earlier. If I did, of course I apologize in advance, but we'll have to look. All right. So what we talked about earlier in this chapter is we mentioned that there were three ways that you could handle mobile. Okay. The first way is to do nothing or do as little as possible. We saw problems with that. Now, we just finished talking about responsive design. The third way of doing this, as mentioned here halfway down on page 269 and pretty much for the last five or six pages of the chapter, is to create mobile-specific content as an example. Okay, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I still get an electronic copy of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel sent to me. So if I come in and do a jsonline.com, I get this. There it is. And it says here www.jsonline.com. However, and I can't really show you this because of the way it's set up, but I'm now going to my phone, and on my phone... I'm again going to put in here, as soon as it comes up, jsonline.com. And what happens here, okay, is it does come up, well, it's maybe it's changed. It used to come up with mjsonline.com, meaning, meaning that I would get a mobile version all right so this is what they're talking about here an alternative version is to use a server to access 
capabilities of the client and send different HTML to different types of clients. This works well if you want a completely different look from a desktop as say to a tablet. All right. Most of the time it says you'll need to use both to get exactly what you want. All right. The MVC framework is mentioned here on this second last or this big paragraph towards the bottom of excuse me page 269. The MVC framework supports a feature called display nodes that allows you to create different views that are delivered based on the client that has made the request. All right, this, again, this is more of a mobile first type of an idea. I, the author says he explains how you can create and manage the display nodes in his pro ASP.NET MVC5 platform book, but for the sports score, sports store application that we're using, we're going to use the simplest form of display nodes, which is to treat all mobile devices as being the same. The goal here is to deliver an experience to mobile devices using the popular jQuery mobile library while keeping the existing content for desktop devices. All right, he does not go into jQuery mobile in this book. All right, all I have to do to create this is to create views and layouts that have a dot mobile dot CS HTML suffix. I created a new layout file in the view shared called underscore layout dot mobile all right dot CS HTML so let's do that to start with. All right so again we're going into the views we want to go into the shared folder where we currently have, always have, that layout. All right. Let's add a new item. This will be a good one because I'm not sure where layout forms are in here. General. Markup. Layout page with Razor? Yep, that's what it says in the tip. And I didn't read the tip. You know, I'm glad when I don't do that. I really am. So this is underscore layout dot mobile dot CSHTML. There it is. We are supposed to then go back and change it. put in this. Now let before we even do that, let's take a look at what's in here. All right, it's HTML. Yeah. Doc type. Okay, what's new? Well, we're adding jQuery mobile, the minified version. We're adding jQuery. We're adding jQuery mobile. All right, so it says the lay, layout uses jQuery mobile, and these have all come via a content delivery network meaning we don't have to use NuGet to install them, also meaning that for this to work, well, we, we will need an internet connection. And the author mentions he's just scratching the surface here on what to do for this stuff. All right, so there's the code. Let's do a file. Save all on this. The MVC framework, we're on the top of page 271. And as the author says here, the MVC framework will automatically identify mobile clients and use the underscore layout.mobile.cshtml file when it is rendering views, seam seamlessly replacing the underscore layout.cshtml. You can see the impact here. You can see the layout is different, but the overall effect is a mess. That's because we need to create mobile versions of the main view that is handling the request. So let's take a look at what we've got. All right, so let's run this. Then we'll go back and we'll create the mobile views. 
because there's just one, and that will pretty much finish up this chapter. I'm already up to 15 minutes, so after we look at this, all right, after we look at this, we're going to stop for this lecture. Doesn't look any different, but it may be that we actually have to be looking at this on a device. I don't know. All right, so I'm going to stop the run. I'm going to go back and do my file, save all, because it's always a good idea to do that. And we're going to come in here and we're going to save what we've been working on. When I come back, I will cover the last one and a half, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half pages of the chapter on creating the mobile views. Be back with that shortly.